Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush, checking with 2011A Asymmetrical. This team so far, uh, one triple crown with three event wins, uh, two skills, two excellence as well, so off to a great start. Uh, we last got to see them haunting, but a lot of great improvements as they've gone through. we are doing a full over this robot, but make sure you keep an eye out on their uh, blocker uh, as well, too, the integrated uh, combo, and uh, maybe find out uh, a little bit more about their jump scare as well, too. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Uh, Lily, so do a full overview on this robot. Let's start out with the uh, drive trains. So talk to me about uh, your motor comp, what's gone into it, and we're going to cover your wings as well. So with our drivetrain, we have a six motor drivetrain to increase our torque as well as our, so our speed. With that, we are on a 343 RPM gear ratio. In addition to help us get over the barrier, we have these sleds right here. These allow us to pop up onto the barrier to get that first wheel up and over. Then once we're on the barrier, we have this raised center wheel right here that allows us to push ourselves up and over. And that helps us transition to getting fully over the barrier. Also attached to our drivetrain, we have our wings. These use a piston to extend outward so that we have a flat surface to push the tri balls in when we have a large grouping of them in front of the goal. And then it uses rubber band tension to pull it back in. I gotta ask you on your, on your drivetrain, when you did that kind of that raise uh, middle of there, is that something you had uh, throughout the entire season? Yeah, when we were brainstorming solutions in our cab, we purposely put this in because we knew that it's such a high barrier that we would potentially have issues with placing or driving over it. So we wanted to make sure that we would be able to plan for that and account for that. Yeah, and watching on the field, obviously working out really well for your team. And yes. I, I think so. it's so important that it's been underestimated how quickly you can go over that uh, bump and keep moving. So many teams get stuck on that. It's cool to see you've been able to accomplish that really well. So congrats yeah. on that. Let's keep Thank moving you. on this room. We're gonna go over to our intake and talk to Cameron uh, to go to intake and then your catapult as well too with that. Uh, I love wide intakes on robots. It's been something that uh, I think is so underrated with teams. So talk to me about that and we'll go into your cata. So with our intake, it's very simple. Just a two bar mechanism that uh, pivots up and down. One motor, uh, just a rubber band roller with anti-slip or mesh covering the rubber band so that way uh, during match play, our rubber bands don't get caught on those other robots, so we're able to do everything the entire time throughout the match. And that transitions into our catapult. We have this uh, little bar down here at the bottom that, with these two screws here that allow us to just prop it up in the intake better. And with the catapult, uh, with our rotational sensor, we can have it set in this preset where when we take a tri ball, it sits very, uh, very centered in the intake and the catapult acts as a battering ram of sort to push tri balls into the goal very easily. And then with our catapult, there's actually two presets, the battering ram as well as the main uh, intake to shooter, which allows us to field tri balls over the center barrier really easily. And then if Brady could fire the catapult, it's just a simple catapult, uh, fair amount of tension that allows us to shoot over the center barrier very easily. There's also two standoffs that aren't actually on right now that we use for skills that allow us to use our kicker for a very consistent and low arc. And another unique thing about our catapult is we actually have a ratchet release. So that way, when we press a button, if for example, a tri ball were underneath our catapult for some reason, this piston just pulls off our ratchet, allowing our catapult to reset. So that way, no matter what in a match, all of our functions are almost always working. Something I want to ask you, and when you look at the packs of your robot uh, with your catapult area, you know, you're shooting from a very low position on that, but I noticed you do have it recessed back quite a bit. Are you able to mitigate most blockers uh, by having that uh, position in there? Um, somewhat, it depends on how high they are. We found that around 20 inches is our max height for shooting. Um, but in match play, we tend to avoid match loading if we can, as sure. we found it's better to use our blocker, which Brady will be talking about later 
to steal our opponent's match loads and use those to our advantage rather than giving them all of our match loads because it's very hard to control your match loads with the catapult. So if we do end up match loading, we most of the time um, just set them off the front of the robot and drive three or four uh, under the alleyway and into the side of the goal. And at least gives you the option uh, should the opportunity happen. Yes, exactly. Especially like end of match, too. We, we see more teams yeah. start to evolve uh, to that way with the meta. So exactly. awesome. Speaking of that, Brady, let's talk about the uh, uh, integrated combo you have with the blocker and your uh, hanger as well, too. Uh, I know for your team, that's definitely uh, been a big highlight of it. Let's talk to me more about it. So yeah, this is something we just added for our previous local competition. And we're excited to really try it out here against some taller uh, robots. We use one piston on either side to lift up a blocker. And this is a little bit under three feet. I believe it's around 35 inches. And the cool part about this, it's it's kind of a little sneaky because the front is wide open. So you can shoot tri balls through there, which kind of gives you false hope because there's a very, very good chance that it clips on one of these and actually sure. lands right in front of us. And then we can score them. And then in addition, we also have our hang mounted to these same two bars. We use these angled standoffs on either side and then three pistons per side to pull ourselves up. And this gets us to B tier, which is extremely useful because it kind of mitigates all of the, the park hangs that, you know, hang on the bar. You get so secure on that bar too. When I was watching your last match, like it, it definitely is one of those uh, hangs where it's like, you're not questioning that you're going to get it. It's just really locked in place. I really like that a lot. So awesome. Well, 2011A, thank you so much for taking time. Asymmetrical, tell us more about your team and your robot. Uh, I wish you the best of luck here at Sugar Rush, but phenomenal season so far. And I can't wait to see what you bring throughout the rest of time. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.